In this chapter, we will learn about reactions of aromatic compounds. Our first reaction is the simplest of these. Uh, this is the electrophilic aromatic substitution type of reaction. And there are several different reactions that fall under this category. So first we have halogenation, which is taking our benzene molecule and adding on a single halogen atom. One of the interesting things that you should note about this is that this is called electrophilic aromatic substitution. So notice that there is not an addition happening, which is what we usually see with an alkene. Instead, what we're seeing is that a hydrogen atom that used to be here has been substituted by something different. Our next one is nitration. This is the addition of a nitro group to the benzene ring, um, replacing the hydrogen. The next reaction is sulfonation. So the hydrogen has been replaced by a sulfonic acid group. The next type is friedel crafts alkylation. This is an alkylation reaction where a hydrogen atom has been replaced by an alkyl chain. And friedel crafts is a specific type of reaction that uses aluminum trichloride as a Lewis acid catalyst. And then in the bottom reaction, we have a friedel crafts acylation. Acyl references the carbonyl group here. So we are adding on an acyl group in an acylation. All of these reactions, being electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions, follow the same general mechanism. In our first step, we form the electrophile. So the reagents that you saw being added to benzene don't actually show the identity of the electrophile. Those reagents are going to react together to create an electrophilic species. And we will shorthand electrophile as capital E plus. The identity of the electrophile varies with the reaction. And what you'll see is that this is essentially the only place where variation occurs. Um, you're going to create an electrophile and a conjugate base all within one step. From here, you always have a pi attack of the electrophile. So the pi electrons in the benzene ring are going to attack the electrophile, just like in the first step of an addition reaction to an alkene. And then we're going to deprotonate the ring to reform our aromaticity. So we're going to look at this mechanism starting at step two, since the identity and the formation of the electrophile varies with each reaction. So if we start at step two, we have a benzene ring and we have just formed the electrophile. From here, we're going to have a pi attack. So the pi electrons of benzene are going to attack the electrophile. This brings us to an intermediate where we've now created a bond to the electrophile. Remember that there is also a hydrogen on this atom because there was one here in the beginning and we've created a carbocation here. This is where step three comes in. You have a base that was probably created in step one. You're going to pull off the proton to push electrons back towards the carbocation. And this reforms the aromaticity of your ring. And this is ultimately one of the major driving forces of this reaction is that once you've created this carbocation, there's a huge driving force to go back down to the lower energy benzene ring. The most common mistake that I see in this mechanism is that students like to try to deprotonate at the carbocation. This doesn't make any sense because you don't want to take away more electrons from a carbon that's already lacking electrons. You don't want to take anything from that carbon. Um, that carbon should still have a hydrogen in the final step. So you want to pull off the hydrogen on the neighboring carbon, the carbon that's beta to the carbocation, so that you can push electron density back towards the carbocation. 
and the identity of the base is going to vary with each reaction. Let's take a look at the reaction energy diagram of this reaction. Our starting material is benzene. Benzene is a fairly stable molecule. It's probably quite low energy, so let's put it towards the bottom. And then we know that we have an intermediate in our reaction. which occurs right after the addition of the electrophile where we've created our carbocation. Now this carbocation is not ideal, it's not better than benzene, that's for sure, but it is going to be conjugated and it's allylic and we've created a new covalent bond by adding a bond to that electrophile, so it's not horrible either. And then our product is going to have the electrophile in the place of the hydrogen and we've reformed our aromaticity and we have our conjugate acid of our base. Now in between these things, we also have some intermediates, some transition states. So we have one where we are creating the bond to the electrophile and we have developing positive character on that carbon. And then in between our carbocation and our final product, we have an intermediate where a bond is being formed between the base and the hydrogen and the bond between the hydrogen and the carbon is beginning to weaken. So we have our starting material, our first transition state, our actual intermediate, our second transition state, and our product. Now our starting material and our product are going to be fairly low energy because they are aromatic compounds. I'm going to put them as equal, although it's possible that the final product might actually be more stable. Um, our transition states are going to be very high energy because we have some partial bonds, we have developing charges. So these are going to be some high energy states. And transition state two is actually going to be a little bit lower energy. We'll talk about why in a second. And then our intermediate which actually has a true carbocation and it's conjugated and allylic and has that extra covalent bond is going to be lower energy than either of the transition states. So now we can connect these to create our diagram. And let's take a look at some of these differences in energy. So our starting material is nice and low energy. To get to that first transition state, this is our energy of activation of this reaction. And this is a pretty high energy of activation. You have to take something that is aromatic and begin breaking that aromaticity. That's going to take a lot of energy put into the reaction. But actually completing the formation of that bond is going to be more favorable. So it's going to go down in energy. So overall, our energy change between our starting material and our intermediate is not so huge. You just have to get over that first high energy of activation. And then to go from the intermediate to the second transition state is yet another energy of activation that has to be overcome. But notice that this energy of activation is much, much smaller than the energy of activation going from our starting material to our first transition state. The reason why is that the difference between our starting material and our first transition state is that we are destroying the aromaticity of the molecule. Whereas going from our intermediate to our second transition state, we are actually restoring the aromaticity. So even though it does take a little bit of energy to deprotonate this, Overall, getting to the product 
is very favorable. So that's a large energy difference going down to the product. So that's going to be our driving force of this reaction.